All right, let's get right back into this. With the 15th pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, my New York Giants select Rolando McClain, linebacker, Alabama. If you watch any of my other videos, I'm very skeptical of McClain. I'm not sure where he's going to be at the NFL level. I think he's a 3-4 only linebacker, but I think the Giants are going to take the risk on him. Our biggest need is middle linebacker. We have to get somebody in the middle. Antonio Pierce is gone. Rolando McClain is arguably the best linebacker in this class. I think we take the risk on him. I just cross my fingers that it's the right move. With the 16th pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Brandon Graham, defensive end, Michigan. Tennessee Titans love these big bruising players. They like players with great production, and Brandon Graham has great production at Michigan. I think he's a great player. I think he's maybe a little small to play defensive end at this level. That's why some people say he's an outside linebacker, but his stock has never been higher. The production's great. I think the Tennessee Titans take the risk on him. Their biggest need is pass rush. And with Jason Peter Paul and Derek Morgan off the board, I think Brandon Graham's the next best choice, and I think they pull the trigger on him. With the 17th pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Jimmy Clausen, quarterback. Notre Dame. A lot of people say that Clawson's going to fall all the way past 25. He's going to end up in Minnesota or Arizona. I don't think so. There's a lot of chatter that the 49ers love Jimmy Clawson. There's a lot of chatter that they think he'll still go in the top 20. Some people say that the 49ers are going to trade down. I think that might very possibly be a smoke screen. I think Clawson's going to end up as a 49er. GM Scott McClellan of the 49ers is gone. He's no longer there. He's the guy who drafted Alex Smith. He was Alex Smith's biggest supporter, but he's gone now. There's no ties to Alex Smith out in San Francisco. I think Alex Smith is a complete bust. He was a bad pick in 2005, and I think they rectify their mistakes here with Clawson. Clawson's the next Joe Montana. He's the next big thing in quarterback. I think he's a great prospect. I think he's going to do great things in the NFL. With the 18th pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Mike Iupati, guard, Idaho. This is the perfect place for Iapati to go. He's raw, but extremely talented. Everyone knows that the Steelers need offensive line help. They needed it last year, and they didn't get it. I think they get it this year. If Iapati pans out, he's an all-pro. He's the next Steve Hutchinson. He could be the next big thing at guard. He's a great player. I think the 49ers understand the significance of getting offensive line help, and I think they take him here. With the 19th pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Sean Weatherspoon, linebacker, Missouri. Sean Weatherspoon is the vocal leader of Missouri's defense. He's a great player. He was great at senior bowl. His measurables are great. His production is great. But it's a little, but an outside linebacker just doesn't go all that high in the NFL. That's why he's still on the board. I think the Falcons love him. They've had him in for interviews. The, Weatherspoon himself has said how much they love him. It seems like a perfect match. The Falcons need outside linebacker help, and there's no defensive end worth taking here. He's a perfect pick. He's a great weak side linebacker, and he will be arguably one of the best linebackers in the league in, the, in years to come. With the 20th pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, the Houston Texans select Earl Thomas, safety, Texas. I personally don't think tonight that Thomas will last this long. I think somebody will trade up, and they will take him between Tex picks 10 and 20. That being said, I don't predict trades in my mock drafts, and I think Thomas is a great pick to go to Houston. He gets to stay home, he gets to stay in Texas, and he gets to go to Houston. The, the, uh, the Texans know that they need to beat high-flying offenses in the, AFC, in the AFC South every year, and they need help in that secondary. Dunta Robinson is gone, he signed with Atlanta, and they have to get some youth and some playmaking ability in the secondary. Earl Thomas is a great player, and I think he's a great fit for this defense. He's a ball hawk, and he will walk away with a lot of interceptions in this league. With the 21st pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Taylor Mays, safety, USC. I think Mays is an overrated prospect. I don't love Mays. I think his coverage skills are bad. I think he comes off of a great team. That's why he gets a lot of hype. That being said, I think the Bengals take the risk on him. The Bengals have Roy Williams, and I think that Taylor Mays is a very similar player to Roy Williams, but he's got a lot more potential. If Williams, if uh, I'm sorry, if Taylor Mays pans out, he could be great. He could also be a huge bust in this league. I don't think that will deter this, the Cincinnati Bengals from taking the risk on him in the latter half of the first round. With the 22nd pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select Jared Audrick, defensive tackle, uh, Penn State. I think the Patriots love this guy. It's on record that they love him. They need defensive end help. Audrick will move out to defensive end in the 3-4. He's a perfect pick here. He's uh, Richard Seymour's replacement. He's the best pick here, and there's a lot of teams that want him. The Patriots will snag him off the board here just in the hope that somebody else doesn't train up for him before that. With the 23rd pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Charles Brown, offensive tackle, um, USC. Um, Charles Brown's a great zone blocking player. He's a little small, but he's great on his feet. He knows how to um, pass to protect. He should be a great player in Green Bay. The Green Bay Packers need a lot of offensive tackle help. Everyone knows how badly Aaron Rodgers would beat up last year, and Brown's the perfect fit for this defense. He's a match made in heaven. Everyone mocks his pick, but it's a great pick. 
With the 24th pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Kyle Wilson, cornerback, Boise State. A lot of people say that Wilson may even be better than Joe Hayden as a cornerback. The Eagles are great to, are very lucky to get him here. It's very bad for Giants fans like myself. Wilson's an absolute playmaker. He plays plays great at Boise State, and I think he, his transition to the NFL won't be as bad as perhaps some other Boise State players were. He's a perfect fit with Sheldon Brown gone. The Eagles need secondary help. This is a great pick. With the 25th pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Jermaine Gresham, tight end, Oklahoma. Uh, they brought in Dante Stallworth. They brought in Anquan Bolden. Joe Flacco has those weapons. He's got three great, great, possibly great wide receivers on this team, but he still needs more targets. Tar he Todd Heap is moving on. He's not a great tight end anymore. And Jermaine Gresham is, has the chance to be an all-pro. He's a great um, pick for the Baltimore Ravens. He's a great weapon for Joe Flacco, and he will be a great tight end in this league. This offense is extremely dangerous now with this addition of Gresham with this pick, and everyone better watch out because the Baltimore Ravens can make a big pu offensive push deep into the playoffs this year. With the 26th pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select Anthony Davis, offensive tackle, Rutgers. This is a big fall for Davis. Davis was one of the top 10 pick, but his pre-draft workouts and measurables have been very poor. He falls out of circumstance, but everyone knows the Cardinals have several holes in this defense because a lot of players are left in free agency. And with the, the retirement of Mike Gandy, offensive tackle is a big need. If Matt Leiner is going to succeed in this league, he needs a lot of protection. Anthony Davis could bring that if he pans out. He's too valuable to not take care for the Arizona Cardinals. With the 27th pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Marquise Pouncey, center, Florida. He won't play center in Dallas. He's going to play guard. Um, Andre Grode is a good center, but Kyle Kozier on the outside um, in Dallas is a very poor player. Uh, Pouncey would be great here. He's great. He fits that big bruising player that the Cowboys love. He's a great pick here, and he will keep Tony Roma upright for years to come. With the 28th pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, the San Diego Chargers select Ryan Matthews, running back, Fresno State. Matthews could be a great running back. He had a great year at Fresno State, and everyone knows that the Chargers without LaDainian Tomlinson really, really need uh, running back help. I think we take the risk on Matthews. He is from Fresno. He's um, a California guy. He gets to stay close to home. He should be very happy with the San Diego Chargers. It's a great organization to go to, and he has a great chance to pan out and be a great player in this league in San Diego. He gets to go to a good situation. He gets to a team that needs him. With the 29th pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Sergio Kendall, outside linebacker, Texas. Here's one of those rush linebackers that I think is going to go in the first round. I'm not sure if Kendall is worth the first round pick, but with everything the Jets have done, even with the addition of Jason Taylor, they still need more of a pass rush. I don't think Taylor's going to bring a lot of pass rushing ability to this team, and I think he may very possibly get cut if Kendall's the pick. I think if Kendall pans out, he could be a great player. He could really do a lot of damage to opposing quarterbacks from the rush linebacker position. Um, he's got the um, intangibles that Rex Ryan loves and if Rex Ryan can get him to pan out it will end up being a fantastic pick for the New York Jets. With the 30th pick in the 2010 NFL Draft the Minnesota Vikings selected Devin McCourty cornerback Rutgers. Everyone knows that the, the Vikings need secondary help. There's been a lot of injuries back there, and there's a lot of age concern back there. They need to inject some youth into this team. McCourty is skyrocketing up draft boards right now. A lot of people are saying he could very possibly be the first cornerback taken. I don't buy that. I think Kyle Wilson and Joe Hayden will go first. I think McCourty will be the third guy, and I think the Vikings may reach for him a little bit here. They need that cornerback help. You can't ignore your needs when you're drafting, and I think this is a great pick for the Minnesota Vikings. With the 31st pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Brian Price, defensive tackle, UCLA. Defensive tackle has been a huge need for years for the Indianapolis Colts. I think they finally addressed it here. Brian Price was once lauded as a top 20 talent, but he slipped um, due to a couple poor workouts in the offseason. I think Brian, uh, Brian Price is a great player. He's a great character guy. His character is off the charts. He's come from a bad situation. He understands and he appreciates what he has in his life, and he appreciates his chance to go to the NFL. I think he's a great pick. He's exactly what um, Bill Polian likes to see in a player, and I think he can finally satisfy those uh, defensive tackle woes that the Colts have. That being said, I wouldn't be surprised to see them go offense. There's a lot of rumors of that, and you never quite know what the Colts are going to do on draft day. With the 32nd pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, the Super Bowl champion New Orleans Saints select Everson Griffin, defensive end, USC. Yes, they brought in Alex Brown from Chicago, but they still need more of a pass rush. We weren't getting a lot of, out of Will Smith and Charles Grant last year. Charles Grant's now gone. Even Will Smith wasn't putting up fantastic numbers. He put up great, good, not great numbers. I think if Everson Griffin pans out, he could be a great player in this league, and it could make one of those two players expendable, or you could see a rotation of three players. I think drafting the slate in the first round, the Saints can afford to select possibly the best player available 
we know how great they are on offense. Now they need to just get a little bit more solidified in the front seven on defense. I think if Griffin pans out, he's a great player. I think with Sean Davis, head coach, he can be a great player. I think this is a great pick, and I think that pass rush will just um, could be very, very dangerous um, for the NFC South in 2010. So there you have it. That's my 2010 mock draft. Let me know what you think. Everyone enjoy the draft tonight. Let's go NFL. I love seeing this stuff. Have a good day.